This FizzCast is going to look at static equilibrium applied to a ladder leaning against a wall. Pause the video for a moment and read the question carefully. Now that you've read the question, you can see that what's being asked for is an expression rather than an answer which is a numerical value. This is looking for a relationship between some of the quantities in the problem. And the expression we want to have is what is the minimum angle that a ladder can be lent without slipping. And we're given some quantities to work with here, that is the mass of the ladder, the length of the ladder, and the fact that one of the surfaces the ladder touches is frictionless, and the other one has a coefficient of static friction that is not zero. Let's begin with a diagram of the situation. We have a wall and a floor, and we have a ladder leaning against the wall. We're told some quantities here, for example the length of the ladder we're told here is L, that's the total length of the ladder in that direction there. The angle, which is the thing we're trying to understand, we'll call theta in there. And we know that there's a coefficient of friction, coefficient of static friction, between the ladder and the floor given by mu. Now let's think about the forces that are acting on the ladder. We know that where the ladder touches the wall, there'll be a normal force. As the ladder pushes on the wall, the wall will push back on the ladder at right angles to the surface. There are no forces at this point parallel to the wall because the question tells us the wall is frictionless. Where the ladder touches the floor, there will also be a normal force, which I'll call N2. And we are told there's a friction force, and we need to include a force that's parallel to the floor due to the friction force. The only other force we have to think about for this ladder is that it will have a mass m and therefore be acted on by the gravitational force. It will be pulled downwards. Again, every part along the ladder will be feeling a gravitational force pulling it downwards, but we can describe the effect of the weight force on this extended object by considering the weight acting through the center of mass of this object. If this ladder is a uniform object, then by symmetry its center of mass will be halfway along and there will be the weight force acting downwards on the ladder. Now we're told we have to analyze this situation with the ladder not slipping. That means the ladder's sitting still. That means it's in static equilibrium. Clearly there are forces acting upon it and those forces could also be giving rise to torques about various axes. But because the ladder is not changing how it's moving, it's not accelerating and it has no rotational acceleration, then we can analyze what's going on using our applications of Newton's second law. That is, the sum of all forces on this object must be zero, and the sum of all torques on this object must be zero. Again, because we know this thing has no angular acceleration and has no linear acceleration, then Newton's second law must equal zero. Well, let's give ourselves a coordinate set here to start with. Let's say We'll call that direction the positive y direction, and that direction the positive x direction. And when we come to rotations, let's call rotating counterclockwise a positive uh, angular measurement there. So let's begin with our sum of all forces, and let's begin with the forces in the y direction to start with. We can look at the y components. We can see we have, pointing upwards, the normal force from the floor, N2, and we have pointing downwards uh, the weight acting on the ladder, so that's be minus mg, and the normal force from the wall and the friction force on the floor, they are completely horizontal, they have no vertical components at all, so that's all of our y components of force, and that tells us that the normal force from the floor onto the ladder must equal the weight force pulling the ladder downwards. Let's move on and think about the sum of all forces in the x direction, the horizontal direction in this diagram, we can see we have the force, the normal force from the wall on the ladder, that's moving in the positive x direction, and we have the friction force uh, going in the negative x direction, so that would be minus the friction force there, and again they're the only horizontal components of forces that we have, so that must also equal zero, and that tells us there that the normal force from the wall must equal the friction force. At the moment we don't know what that friction force is. Remember, it's a static friction force, and that can take any value from zero up to some maximum. So we know that must be less than 
or equal to uh, the coefficient of friction multiplied by the normal force, in this case it's the normal force at the floor, which we've called N2. So we now have the normal forces there, one of them in terms of the weight, the other one in terms of the static friction force. Neither of those seems to have anything to do with the angle at this point. But the other condition that we need to maintain for static equilibrium is that the sum of all torques must be zero. What are the sum of all torques? Well, of course, we've got to decide what point we're going to calculate those torques about. What's going to be the axis we're going to consider this object to have zero angular acceleration about? And of course, we can choose any point here that we like. In this case, a useful choice would be the location down here where the ladder meets the floor. Why is that useful? It's useful because we have four forces here that could give rise to torques, but if we choose where the ladder touches the floor, then two of those forces won't contribute any torque around that point. Their distance between the application of the force and the axis is zero. So let's calculate our torques about that point. Uh, and again, we'll make torques that are trying to cause a, an anti-clockwise rotation, we'll call those positive. If you look carefully at the diagram, you can see the weight force pulling the center of the ladder down here would indeed try to drive the ladder anti-clockwise about that axis that we've chosen. So that will be a positive torque, and it will be equal to the size of the force, mg, multiplied by, in this case we'll consider the, all of that force multiplied by the lever arm, the perpendicular distance between the line of action of the force and the axis. And that will be this distance just in here. And you can see, hopefully from that triangle, that that distance in there will in fact be the hypotenuse, which is half the length of the ladder, multiplied by the cosine of the angle. So in fact, our perpendicular distance there is going to be L over 2 cosine theta. That's the torque from the weight about the axis. Now, the only other force that's acting at some distance from the axis here is the normal force from the wall, N1. Again, we can do the same trick there, where we consider the line of action of the force, and then think about the perpendicular distance, which in this case would be this distance just here. And again, you can see, we can use some fairly straightforward trigonometry to find that this will be the size of the force, N1, multiplied by that lever arm, which will be, in fact, L sine theta. And that must all add up to zero because they are all the torques that we have. If we rearrange this, um, we can hopefully see, the, for example, the L's cancel out quite nicely there and there. And we'll end up rearranging that to show we end up with putting all the things that depend upon the angle on the left-hand side, because it's the angle that we're trying to find. We find sine theta divided by cosine theta will actually be mg divided by twice n1. Sine theta on, on cosine theta, I can actually write more simply as the tan of the angle. That's what sine theta on cosine theta equals, tan of theta. And now what I'm looking for, of course, is the minimum angle. That's what the question was asking for, the minimum angle. Well, it should be fairly easy to remember that if you want the smallest angle, that implies you want the smallest value of tan of the angle. If you go back and remind yourself how the tan function works. So to get the smallest value of, of tan theta, well the weight up here, it's a constant in our problem, we can't change the mass of our, of our ladder. Um, but on the bottom line we have this normal force, N1. And remember, up here we said that the normal force, the largest it could be, was the coefficient times the normal force from the floor, N2. So to make tan theta the smallest, we actually want to make this expression on the denominator here the largest. So therefore we'll have, for our minimum angle, we'll have that will be when the tan of that angle is mg divided by the largest thing we can have on the bottom, which will be 2 times mu n2. And we can simplify that a little bit further by realizing that we know that n2, remember, equals mg, so the mg top and bottom cancel out, and we're left with 1 over 2 times mu. So there, as we were asked to find, is an expression for our angle in terms of the quantities that we were told in the problem. Perhaps a little surprisingly, 
it turns out the only thing that angle depends upon is the size of the static friction coefficient between the ladder and the floor. But if you think about it, that's actually the only thing that it can depend upon. As the ladder, for example, goes to a smaller and smaller angle, um, you're getting a larger and larger torque from the weight around that axis. And so to compensate for that, you need to have a larger and larger value for N1. N1 is balancing that static friction force. And so you'll get to a situation where if the static friction force isn't sufficiently large, that normal force can't provide a balancing torque, and the ladder will indeed rotate around that axis. It will start to slip.